Mysteries, it's your girl Mila Sana. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're not. So in today's video, well today is day four of my COVID Chronicles. Yesterday, which was day three, was so annoying. Like I planned to do what I was going to do today, yesterday, but um, the optometrist called me and told me to come back to the ER so she could follow up with me. And if y'all hear that in the background, it's my little brother. I don't know what he's yelling about, but he's yelling. But, um, yeah, he's playing the game. And if you hear, like, game plays in the background, it's my little sister. But, yeah, so the optometrist called me yesterday and told me she wanted to see me. So, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, it is an ulcer that's in my eye. It's not a scratch. And I'm not mad that the other doctors didn't tell me that. It's just they were optometrists. So, you know how sometimes, like, if it's not your specialty, you can't really make a diagnosis. Um, yeah, I had to say to make sure I said that right because yesterday I said diagnosis and it was so ugly. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I do have an ulcer in my eye. It, it's really small. She said like if it were bigger and more like central, like in the middle of my eye, then it could have caused like um some loss of my vision. Um, but I'm super blessed. So it's minor and I have to go back on Friday. I have to go back a total three more times before um she just kind of like it's like okay it's healing on its own because she said it could also get bigger and we don't want that so yeah but as far as my covid symptoms go today honestly i'm only experiencing congestion like i said like the first video that i made the first few days of it were really the worst for me like i had like the bad headaches and stuff like that but now i'm only experiencing congestion and still have lost the taste in smell lost have lost still can't taste or smell anything so that's pretty sucky um today you can see my little school set up in the back but um i had classes i had a and p and chemistry and like i said i had that doctor's note for march 8th i'm just not gonna use it because i need to pass but like i am so tired guys just because of everything going on like that, oh that's another thing with my covid um i am extremely sleepy all the time like i take nyquil to help me it's like i'm extremely sleepy but i also can't sleep so i take nyquil at nighttime to help me sleep but yeah like i was really considering because like i am tired and i can't sleep i mean my classes are they do start at 10 and 10 30 every day so it's not that bad but i end up staying up late and stuff like that um studying and stuff on my ipad so i was just like i'm always so tired and it's like even when i try even when i try to go to sleep at a decent hour i still have trouble sleeping because of like my congestion and stuff like that so it's super um super annoying but yeah, lately, um, every day since I've been in quarantine, I have been using my vision board to keep me like strong. Um, because my I made this at my best friend's mom's uh, vision board party, and it was probably the best idea ever. Like I needed that. I didn't know I needed it until I was there and we were making the vision boards, and it took me like forever. I, yeah, me, my best friend, me. Everyone else except for most of like the guys, the women were putting real thought and detail into their boards, okay? Because we have we have the vision. Um, but yeah, so I'm mean, using my vision board to just keep me like mentally afloat. Um, and yeah, so I, I am very cheery, but I do feel terrible. Um, I won't lie about that. Um, I am only 20. So, you know, like COVID-19 has been affecting me differently than it may affect someone who's older. Um, and yeah, so as far as COVID goes, still fighting the good fight. Um, just congestion. And this is day, day eight of my quarantine. Yeah, it's day eight of my quarantine. Um, and the health department, I called me, well, I called them, and they said basically, like, if you, when you're quarantined for 10 days, and as long as you no longer feel your symptoms, basically you'd be fine for leaving quarantine without getting tested. But just being who I am, like, I have to know definitely that I don't have it anymore for me to just be like, okay, I'm going out and about, like, I'm going to have to get tested just for my own peace of mind. Um, and yeah, after that, I'll have 90 days of immunity, meaning I can't be like people who contract COVID-19. This is all from the health department. I am not making this up. It's not fake news. Okay. Um, apparently people who contract COVID-19, um, once they've like 
done once the disease once the virus is like you know flushed its way through your system you have 90 days of immunity basically basically the guy told me i was immune to quarantine i, I mean i was exempt from quarantining because for 90 days i can't contract or, or it's extremely hard to contract the virus um, I don't want to say it's impossible. He said it's extremely hard to contract the virus within that 90 day period and you can't be a carrier for it. So meaning like even if you are around someone who's sick, like now I don't know, these are neat, this may be fake news, but I think it's like even if you are around somebody who gets, who is sick, like you, there's no possibility of you being a carrier, even if you aren't experiencing the symptoms, so you're relatively safe. Um, so that's like the silver lining for me. I literally told my mom, I said, mom, when this is done, going somewhere she was just like okay but we all know what that means in parent talk but yeah enough chit chat let's get to the point of today's covid chronicle see so as you guys can see i have a mountain of clothes behind me however this mountain is just the literal tip of the iceberg i am what you call i am like a hoarder for clothes, I'm a hoarder, but like a sentimental hoarder of clothes. Like I have some clothes from, and my brother just yelled, you're not a hoarder, but I am. I have some clothes that I only have because there are memories attached to them, even though the piece of clothing is not quality, or it's not really like, I'll never wear it again, you know? So honestly, this is like, two of the drawers for my dresser and I also have three bags of clothes in the back like one two three you can't see them but they're there and clothes in the closet so what I'm gonna do today is the Comarie folding method and also okay first of all if you're not familiar with the Comarie method so called the Comarie, Comarie method of folding is basically like a really nice neat organized way it's like maintaining your dress your drawers and stuff like that it's really aesthetically pleasing. Here's a picture of what it looks like. Um, and it was developed by Marie Kondo, who's a Japanese, sorry, I'm looking at my sister's game. She, she's a Japanese um, organization consultant. Um, and she has this, this um, many people probably share this philosophy, but you should get rid of things that don't bring you joy. And when I say like, to me, what it means if something doesn't bring me joy, it's like, if I have like a, oh, I remember this but it doesn't really make me happy like if i don't have it it'll if you don't have it then you will feel like you're missing something so i'm having to learn for myself like okay jamila you've had like these pants for instance i don't wear these pants i wore them in a pageant the q pageant a lot is a very fond memory fond memory for me I don't need these in my closet anymore. And, I'm, and I also want to revamp my wardrobe. Like I want to reinvent my image, but I can't do that when I don't have any space to do so because of all the old memories. Like I'm trying to get in with the whole, out with the old, in with the new, but do keep some old stuff. Cause you know what they say, make new friends, but keep the old one is silver and the other is gold. But yeah, um, I sound so crazy. I learned that back in like elementary school. But yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you guys like the folding method. And I'm also just going to go through a... My sister just made an outburst. I don't know if you heard it, but who knows? It's real life. We live here. Um, I'm going to go piece by piece through my clothes and figure out if it brings me joy or not. So once I do that, I will be back. Ooh. Okay, before I start showing you guys how to fold using the Comarie method, I want to address that yes, it's a new day, but as you guys know, I haven't been feeling well. So yesterday after all my classes were over, I just went to sleep. You know, after I did like studying and stuff, and the sunlight left, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go to sleep and pick right up tomorrow. So now, I can get into showing you guys. Also, I have chosen my um, keep pile, and my go away pile is over there in the corner, looking shameful. Um, and yeah and mind you like i said i'm not doing all my clothes because that would take way too much time but i'm still in a small amount so you guys can see what to do when you're going through your own clothes so now let's get into folding this part's gonna go by really fast but basically you fold the crotch in fold the pant leg up to the waistline and fold three times or however many times until your pants are in a nice fold and can be stood up now you want to repeat this for however many pairs of pants you have even yes your sweatpants your strange slushy pants like these 
or even leggings and look how nice it looks these and sweaters you want to get like a rectangle so you want to fold them fold the sweater until it reaches a rectangular shape and fold it over however many times until you get your nice little roll and for hoodies you just want to do the same process but flatten the hood and there you go before we start, I apologize for the wrinkliness of this shirt. What you want to do is get that triangle, that rectangle again on both sides and fold until you get a nice flat shirt. Now for underwear, you're going to fold the crotch up to the waistline and fold the left and right side into the middle and then fold that in half and there you go. For your sports balls are similar, you're going to fold the left and right into the middle and fold the back down and then half that. Fold the bottom up to the top, fold that in half, and once more, and you have a fold. All right, lovelies, I, that is all that I'm going to be showing you guys how to fold today. If you think I left something out, comment, um, and I will make a video, or I'll just send you personally a video or a link on how to fold that specific item. But, yeah, so this is called the Conmari Folding Method by Marie Kondo. Like I said earlier, she is a organization consultant and um, she has a series on Netflix, which is really good. I haven't even finished all of it, but I know it was that one episode about folding and I just was like, I want this because like I hate folding clothes and just stacking them and having to like like comb through and things like that it's just really annoying because my drawers get messy again but if everything's already in like a nice little fold you just lift and put it back it is all it's like a Legos for your dresser or whatever you're folding even your pantry but yeah um, so I love this method. I'll link her website. Um, she has a book. I'll put that in the description as well as the Netflix series. And yeah, when it comes to organization, y'all, I think organization for me is like the highest form of self-care. And as y'all are going to find out, find out I'm all about self-care, whether that's like skincare, mental, all of that stuff. Okay. Um, I can't focus in an environment. I can't achieve my visions in an environment that I'm just like, that up early I can't I can't focus like that I just cannot do it if you can more power to you but I highly suggest you try to straighten up your area the area around you because um you'll be surprised how much your environment actually makes a difference in the work that you produce so even like your bedroom it seems like you know what work in the bedroom do you need to do I mean making sure you have like a good night's rest your bedroom is your place of like recovery like you know what I mean so you want to recover in a sterile environment you don't want to recover somewhere you have a whole bunch of clothes on the floor when you get up you step on something when you open your drawer you can't close it because it's too many clothes in it I'm speaking from personal experience um in the past but yeah sometimes still I have stuff that I can't close the drawer but anyway um you want to make sure your environment is really reflecting I think that my environment reflects what the like the chosen environments that I put myself in and choose to be in and live in I think those environments reflect me internally and how I feel internally like I was telling my friend the other day I'm really into like luxury items and like material things but I will spend more money on where I live like you know I'll spend a thousand dollars on a painting if it makes me feel good before I'll spend like a thousand dollars on like a bag. Some people have clothes, clothes is that for them, but for me it's like my environment because my outside environment is like a reflection of my internal environment. So you know, friends and family, if I'm severely depressed or if I'm having a really bad time, my room, my personal spaces are gonna be a mess. Just because when I'm not feeling my best, that is partially like one of the things that are kind of like a tell sign for me so I try my best even when I do feel sad and stuff like that my environment is just like a big thing for me in my well-being I don't know if that's for any other anybody else um but I know that you guys should give it a try just like reorganizing yourself and things like that and see how much you can actually get done like I said it's very healing and this coma the folding method is just a tip of the iceberg but like that's what I said earlier um, about you know letting go of things that don't necessarily bring you joy um that can go for anything it could be shoes it could mean you know I'm not I'm not like a minimalist but I am into only having things that I really love and don't get me wrong you can love a lot of stuff but you need to have the space for it and if you have the space for it that's great but unfortunately right now I don't have the space for because I share my room with my little sister I don't have a space that I really want to keep all of my things and not have them like in my face you know what I mean so I value you know my peace of mind more than I value any like item so 
um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm in the process of doing that in general, but I just wanted to show you guys the folder method because it's really simple and it's something that everybody can do and implement into their lives. So I'm going to, like I said, link her book, Netflix series, and all that in the description. Really hope you guys learned something in this video. If you didn't, I'm so sorry. It, well, I'm not I'm sorry because you knew about it already and that's, you be on it, okay? That's not, I'm not sorry for that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like this video. So before you leave, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification button. And I'll see you in the next video.